And welcome back to the Turdferg Radio Network. All right, today's topic is momentum. And this is just an introductory video meant for like the 10th grade physical science type class. And let's just go straight into it. What is momentum? Well, what does it take to have momentum? Let's give a little vocabulary definition here. Momentum is nothing but the product of an object's mass and velocity. Now, usually when somebody's thinking about momentum, they're usually thinking about like, oh, let's, oh, I got it. Let's go play football. Put on a helmet here. All right. Yeah, that's a good looking helmet. This, this is the worst looking helmet ever drawn. But anyway, and then let's go with another guy here. And let's give this guy a helmet that's even worse than the first. Oh, wait, wait, I got it. He's wearing like one of them visory thingies. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one bad looking dude there. That's. It's like getting hit by an old television set. But anyway, for him. Anyway, usually when most people think about momentum, they think about something like this where two objects are running into each other, two cars are running into each other, two football players. And what you have to address is that each of these objects has a momentum. Now, when you're looking at this, oh, that's a terrible looking symbol here. Let's do it. Let's do it like game time. Momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So each of these objects has a mass times a velocity, and that is all momentum is. So in other words, there is your formula for momentum. It's one of the easiest basic problems that we ever get to do. If you're having a little bit of trouble with that symbology here, you've seen me do it before. Let's go back to elementary school. I don't know what they do now. When I was a kid, you had to write on paper it looked like this. There. Some people would draw momentum to look like that. It's actually the Greek letter rho. Some people would put a little curl in the tail. Usually on momentum, I don't put the curl in the tail. I just do like this. Anyway, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So we know that M stands for mass. Mass in all these problems should be in kilograms. V stands for and velocity should be in meters per second. If you're ever doing a problem and it gives you miles per hour, if you want to do a quick conversion to get that to meters per second, just times that by 0.45, and that will get you in the meters per second very fast. So that's a pretty handy little conversion right there to remember. So anytime we have miles per hour and you need meters per second, times it by 0.45, and you fix that. So the only other symbol that you're looking at in here is what this row stands for. And we just said that that row stands for momentum. And momentum, the unit, is actually a very easy one. Look over here. Momentum is mass times velocity. So what's the unit for momentum? Well, what's the unit for mass? Kilogram. What's the unit for velocity? Meters per second. So the unit for momentum is kilogram meters per second, the n. So very common sense type of unit. You've got the equation. Now let's just go do like a basic problem with it. Here, what is the momentum? So here this problem asks me to find what is the momentum of a 1,650 kilogram car traveling at 21 meters per second. Okay, I'm going to be honest. That car is probably not 1,600 kilograms, more like 12. But anyway, it's the one we've got for the example today. So what is this car's momentum? Rho is equal to mv. So all we have to do is 1650 times 21. And that problem is over. So let's see if we can't do a little calculadorisms here. What we got? It's 1650 times 21. 34, 6, Three, four, six, five, zero. Now the unit should be kgms. However, if you were going for sig figs, your answer would have just been 35,000 kgms. All right, so that's a pretty easy problem. So that's all basic momentum is. Let's do another momentum one. How about this? 15 kilograms is a mass, and now, even if you weren't reading it, KGMS tells you that that 135 is a what? Is a, is a, 
There's actually people here. I promise I'm not talking to myself in the room. It's what? Okay, I hope you all heard that. So you know that I'm not crazy. There's people here. There is a momentum. It even says, if the momentum. How fast is it traveling? Rho is equal to mass times velocity. I think what screws people up is at the first of the year, we have an equation that looks like this, that's also rho. And so people get these two confused. Well, you've got to keep them separate. What is the difference between, what, what is this the equation for? Oh, I'm not getting any answers. <laughs> yes, that is the letter for mass. This was density is the first thing we did. And so some people get the M and V and that confused with the M and V and momentum. But remember, this. notice something. Look at the Vs in these equations, and it'll let you know that these are two different equations. Do you notice anything about how I write the Vs? I just got to find a student and say, this one has a little archy thing on there. I usually call it a tail. Look, this V is capital. Capital V in physics stands for volume. Lowercase v with the little tail on there stands for, and I'm not joking, there literally should be like a little tail on your velocities. Anyway, we didn't need any of this. I just threw it in there because I like showing off. Rho is 135. M is 15. Oh, it's going to be some insane math on this one. Maybe y'all can help me. Uh, divide both sides by 135. No, that don't make sense. Uh, times 15 on both sides. No, then we get 15 squared. Do what? Divide both sides by 15. And people sh Oh, my goodness, what are you doing? I don't want to change my color scheme. Jerk. Leave me alone. 135 divided by 15. Nine. Oh, that's a massive answer. 9 meters per second. Now, I'm just curious, what would the sig figs on this one look like? I should have two sig figs. How did I get 9? 9.0. And overall, we're getting a lot better with our sig figs this year. I gave out about ooh, probably 10 people got bonus on the last test for their sig figs. Let's do one more equation. I love this problem. Uh... Here you've got a baseball, obviously. It's asking you to find force. And here, let's just do something. 0 0.250, that's a mass. And then we've got this baseball going 100 miles per hour. Well, I just taught you a nifty trick a second ago. If you want to change miles per hour to meters per second without going to a lot of trouble, times it by 0.45. What's 100 times 0.45? 45. And then here we've got this 0, 2, 3 seconds, and that's just the time. One of the coolest equations in physics looks like this. We call it the FAT equation. And that's why we call it the FAT equation all the time. It's perfect for when you have a problem with force and time in it like this. And this is actually the way Newton originally wrote MV final. This is actually Newton's, when he wrote F equals MA originally, this was actually how he wrote it. He actually wrote this fat equation. Um, let's actually just see if we can use this fat equation. And now you should be going, Mr. Cole, how come you're actually throwing this into the momentum chapter? Because what is MV? What is MV? What are those? I'll just keep squiggling down this page so somebody says what those are. Those are momentums. So this is like momentum final minus momentum initial. So this is a very handy equation to use, this fat equation. I'm going to write it down again. F, what does delta stand for? Does anybody remember? Change. Very good. Minus MV initial. What's funny is a lot of the physics students don't use the FAD equation a lot. I love using the FAD equation. Uh, this problem asks me to find force. So look at this. F. It said that time was 0, 2, 3. So for delta T, I'm going to write 0, 2, 3. Equals mass. Hey, wait a second. 
mass is what did it say this baseball is? Two five? I think that's a little heavy. But we'll go with it. Times it says someone's trying to stop the baseball, i.e. catch it. What's the final speed of the ball if you're trying to stop the ball? Yeah. Minus 0.25 times velocity initial, which was 100 miles per hour, but we changed it to meters per second. And look at this. All we've got to do now is plug this in the calculator. As soon as my screen starts working again. So 0.25 times 45. Do I even need to worry about this zero part in here? So this is a negative 11.25 f.023. Kind of got a little ugly there. Now, if you do notice, it's actually negative 11.25. And again, it's because we're stopping the ball. So while we do math-wise to this, yeah, divide both sides by 0, 0.023. If you didn't do the negative on your answer, I'm not going to like kill you over that. That's not that big a deal. So let's just divide by 0 0.023. We've got an answer of 400. Now I need a good bit of memory to come back. What was the unit for force, however? Force. Newtons. Very good. Now I got a feeling that y'all are probably going to be like, okay, so what is the sig figs on that problem? Mmm... 100, 0, 2, 3, 2, 5. What's my sig figs? 1. So really this answer should just be in. And again, as always on test, it would be great if you do both of those like that. I only had three problems left on this homework. The first one is actually just a 4 kilogram pumpkin. There's a mass. There's a velocity, 990 miles per hour. And you may be going like, how could a pump can go 990 miles per hour? Easy. Get on the Discovery Channel. If you ever watch this, they've got this show called Pumpkin Chunkin', where they will literally take pumpkins. This will be a fine-looking pumpkin. This is not a good-looking pumpkin. <laughs> there. There's my pumpkin. This is... I think I'm going to do the entire world a favor. <laughs> there. The pumpkin chunking gun is no more, but some of the pumpkin chunkers have velocities of 990 miles per hour. I'll give you a hint on my number two. On number two, use the fat equation. And number three, well, use your imagination. I'll give you a hint. No, I'm not. Oh, well. Anyway, good luck. That was entirely pointless last, like, 60 seconds of film. Just remember, America. Oh, true. We're in the South. America, I love you. I'm going to give a little nose. and a... I should really stop this drawing now. Ah, that's a good-looking guy. Anyway, peace out. Later. Deuce.